All right. So hi, guys. Welcome to the third episode of Coffee with a Coach. I am Coach Allie, and with me today is my co-host, Leah. And if you, somebody pointed out once before, if you actually take the initials of our name and mix them up, you get both of our names. So <laughs> fun fact, Leah, I don't know if you realize that. Did you? No, but yeah, I like it. No, no, I didn't. But here we are. You learn something new every day. Yeah. <laughs> so obviously it's coffee with a coach and I have my, I don't know if you can see it, my wonderful Disney princess mug because I'm feeling kind of magical today. <laughs> feeling happy. What about you, Leah? What do you have? <laughs> well, I usually like to drink out of this mug over the weekend. It's called a no, no. Drama no drama llama i could use one i could use a no drama llama in my life i don't know about you but don't spit up your coffee because we uh, really know it's not coffee it's vodka <laughs> <laughs> how are you gonna call me out like that really <laughs> i just guessed i'm sure it's not vodka <laughs> oh no, it's not so anyhow um, welcome to today's episode and just based on some of the last episodes we've had, we got a little bit of feedback and one of the things that a couple people wanted to actually hear about was understanding how to actually read a nutrition label and that seems to be something that gets people all hung up and uh, trying to figure out when you're making choices, what's a better choice or a right choice or the lesser of the demons. So we're gonna kind of navigate that in a fun way today that has helped me through the years. I kind of consider it my nutrition label hack. But how you how do you do with nutrition labels, Leah? I don't read them, but I have started to read them, which, is, which brings up to the point, um, I was listening to your last uh, live interview with Revive on Instagram. And um, one of the points that really stuck out to me is when you did mention nutrition labels. And um, I uh, I have a guilty confession. I tend to ignore them, especially the serving size. Can you, just, you speak up, Leah? Just speak up just a little bit for me. We're having a hard time hearing you or I'm having a hard time hearing you. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, so... Basically, I was listening to your interview on Instagram with Revive, and when you mentioned the point about nutrition labels, it actually stuck out to me, and it's something that I should definitely pay attention to because I have a, a thing where I just start eating snacks or I start whenever I have my moments of weakness, and um, I don't pay attention to serving size because I, it's one of those, if I don't see it, I'm not, it's not going to affect me. But it definitely does affect me, which leads to my story about tortilla Leah. So, uh -oh. Tortilla Leah. Now that sounds like a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. So, so you gotta tell me about that. What is that? Well, basically, I when I eat salads or anything like that, I I, ha I have to have a crunch factor. Now I know that there's there's all these better options for a crunch factor, like throwing in some cucumbers or throwing in, I don't know what other any other toppings that can give you that crunch but again when i have my moments of weakness i turn to these guys <gasps> leah i know tortilla I leah <laughs> <laughs> i can't help it it's so good and remember i mentioned in the last episode that i have more of a salt than i have a sugar to i know you called me out anyway because i drink whiskey so either way i lose um, but anyway, so, um, I did notice that when I have my chips, I tend to go about three times the serving size. But oh, yeah. So do realize, you just keep taking from the bag? Do you just, do you just keep grabbing from the bag? <laughs> yes, I do. You just hang it under your neck and just kind of graze? <laughs> pretty much. Pretty much. I can't help it. It's so good. It's so good. So, fun fact about tortilla chips, tortilla Leah, that each tortilla chip, so what is the serving size on that? Just tell me by, by chance. What does it say? How many tortilla chips is in a serving? Seven chips. Seven chips. And it is how many calories for a serving, Leah? 140 
calories. Okay. So technically that means every tortilla chip is 20 calories. Okay. So what is your average amount of tortilla chips that you eat? I mean, if, especially if you're not paying attention to it, how, just take a guess. How many do you think that you eat? Um, 21. I can't hear you. How many? <laughs> uh, 21. 21. So if everyone, so you're roughly getting about 400 calories just in tortilla chips. And that's not including if you dip them in anything or, you know, you're using it as, as just like mindless eating. And that's where we tend to get tripped up because we don't think about it, especially if it's like a whole grain chip or, you know, oh, it's not flavored, it's good for you, or it's fresh salsa. And yeah, that's 400 calories. That's like two full chicken breasts that you just ate in tortilla chips. I know. And I guarantee you those chicken breasts would fill you up more. <laughs> it's definitely true. Um, and I mean, I know the salad is going to be more of a side dish. And really the main dish was the Tostitos. So it's like reverse. Okay. Well, you're not alone. But the bigger question is, did you ever really think about how many calories per chip and versus how many you're actually eating? No, honestly, I didn't. I mean, I, I would see it. It's clearly in black print. And, uh, but I'm just like, no, it doesn't apply. I don't know. I just felt like it just didn't apply. It's okay. Well, you're not alone. So don't worry about that. So I have a fun hack for helping us figure out exactly how to read those very daunting nutrition labels that so many people ignore on the back of those packages. So first thing I like to point out again is that if you look on the back of the package, it's almost like a little bit of a scavenger hunt. It does say that most of those numbers are based on a 2,000 calorie a day diet. So remember, most of us, 2,000 calories a day is actually already too much. So even those numbers are a little skewed. Now, I kind of like to look at it much like I look at it. I'm going to pop up an image here for us. Much like, I'm going to hide you real quick, Leah. And I'm going to show everybody here a nutrition label. Okay, or not a nutrition label, a paycheck. So our paychecks are kind of very interesting because if you notice in the paycheck, you're going to see something called a gross earnings or a gross pay. Now, this is no one's paycheck, by the way. This is just something that my lovely co-host found for me to use as a graphic. But if you see here, you're going to see something called your gross earnings. And we all know that when we make money, this is how much money I should be making before Uncle Sam takes his part and everybody else takes theirs. And then we have over here our deductions. And especially if you're living in Florida, we have major deductions, which would be our Social Security and Medicare, you know, our federal withholding as well. So those are things that come out every paycheck. And at the very end, after those deductions, we get something called our net pay. That net pay is actually what you're taking home, what you get to spend. So I'm going to bring Leah back in here. Leah? Oops. Okay. So Leah, you're back with me. So you yeah. saw my, my paycheck idea. So looking at that paycheck and, and I'm not understanding, unfortunately, we're having technical dish issues today, people. So kind of hang with us. I'm not sure why it won't let me bring that third screen up to show you. But when we're looking at that paycheck, that gross or total is, is usually what we start with when we're looking at our, our nutrition label. Okay, We're, what is that total amount before we start to break it down? Now, a lot of times, and Leah, if you look at your tortilla bag, one of the things that I like looking for are the nasty little fillers and hiders when we're looking at, is it really good or bad for me? One of those things we start to look at is our total carbohydrates. Can you find that on there? Can, can you see on your bag where it says total carbohydrates? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so our total carbohydrates are our gross pay. That is the total amount that you're going to see that that is all in. Now, underneath that total carbohydrate, do you see some little subsections? Are there things that are listed? Okay, what are, what are those? 
So we have dietary fiber mm -hmm. and total sugars. Okay. So in this particular bag, we have your dietary fiber and then we have sugars. But in other products, we may find another ingredient called sugar alcohol or something that says sugar ALC. Those are the things that actually make up the carbohydrates. So fiber, is fiber good for us? Yes. Okay, correct. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> fiber, is, <laughs> fiber is actually good for us. It's great for colon health and makes us feel full if somebody's trying to lose weight. Fiber is an important component. And, you know, of course, we need fiber so we can talk about the thing, the unmentionables, being able to go to the bathroom regularly, right? Very, very important. So our bulk of our waist, our regularity of our bowel movement, that's all really important when it comes to fiber. So not to gross anybody out, but sometimes we have to just talk about that shit, right? <laughs> so. Okay, so just a disclaimer, we do say bad words on this show. We're real. Um, okay, yeah, right? we're it's super like, real. Super I'll tell real. it to you like it is. Yes, so, and she does too. I know. And so when you are looking at that label or those carbohydrates, those fibers are actually good carbohydrates, right? Because not all carbohydrates are these nasty devils that we're worried about. Some of them are good. So going back to our paycheck again, we look at our first set of deductions, which would be our Social Security and Medicare. That is our dietary fiber. We have to take that away because that shouldn't go as part of my total since it's something that we use. Fiber good, let's take it away. Now, in the case of sugars, we don't deduct that because that is what it is. So if it says sugars, one gram, or sugars, five grams, or however many grams we have, and then on another episode, we can talk all about sugars and the different kinds, but we would leave that in because that is a carbohydrate, okay? Now, if there was, let's say, a sugar-free product, or a lot of these um, nutrition bars that are on the market right now, they want to make it very low net carbs or, or non-sugar blood sugar impacting, you're going to see that sugar alcohol or sugar ALC. That would be our second deduction. That would be that federal withholding that we would take out. Okay. You following me so far? So far. So far, right? So gross pay is my total carbohydrates. First deduction is my fiber which would be like my social security and Medicare. My second deduction is going to be any sugar ALC or sugar alcohol. Please don't confuse it with sugars, okay? They're not the same. The sugar alcohol does not impact our blood sugar levels, which is why you'll find it in a lot of sugar-free products. Diabetics tend to go for foods that have that, and too high of a count could cause some stomach distress, okay? So once we take those numbers out, then voila, we have our net pay or our take home amount, okay? So our net carbohydrates. And those are things that we want to take a look at because when we're trying to figure out whether or not something is better for me, and in the case of your tortilla chips, let's, let's go with how many carbs are in there? 19 grams. Okay, so you're getting 19 grams and how much fiber? One gram. Okay, so if I had to deduct that, and you said there was no sugar alcohol when I first asked you, there are only sugars, right? Yeah, it just says total sugars. It doesn't say sugar alcohol. Okay, so, and how many sugars are in that? Actually, zero grams. Zero grams of sugar. Okay, beautiful. Well, if something is salty and savory, it shouldn't really feel sweet, right? So, <laughs> so zero grams. So if we go back to my paycheck analogy, I have $19, I'm gonna take a dollar out, right? So I'm left with $18 as my take home pay, which is not bad, but if I am watching those carbohydrates so that I can lean out, lose weight, tone up, give the liver a rest, give the pancreas a rest, get out of metabolic syndrome, all these lovely things, then I kinda of wanna keep that number a little lower. So my take home or net carb for that package for you is 18 grams. All right. Now, this is where you would say, okay, tortilla, Leah, I'm not going to ask you to give up your tortilla chips, but I'm going to tell you next time, and, and God help me, there are so many versions of tortilla chips that are out there now, but next time, is that the best bang for your buck? Right? No. Because 
Well, you're only getting seven little pieces per paycheck. I know, it's kind so, of bad. Right? So that's not very much. What if there was one that gave you 15 pieces per paycheck? Would you like that better? Much better. Yeah, you'd feel better, right? Yeah. There might be one that says 22 pieces per paycheck. Yeah, but don't, aren't the, won't those taste like cardboard? Aren't usually those the ones that don't really taste the most appetizing? Because uh, I tried yeah, those little, before. Ye of little faith. Okay. So, no, that is not true. <laughs> <laughs> there's actually some really awesome brands and surprisingly there's some store brands that are out there that that give you a little bit more bang for your buck and you can actually use this philosophy for anything whether it's cookies whether it's um, little brownie bites whether it's tortilla chips crackers you just you kind of want to see if you evaluate that paycheck what is my best bang for the buck so somebody likes your name, Leah. Somebody likes tortilla, Leah. <laughs> I do too. It's really a lot of fun. Now the other shout thing is out. you what? Shout out! Thank you for joining us. Yes, thank you. Thanks for and thank you to everyone who's comment. joined us so far. Yeah, thank you for making the comment. I love that, and I like to call Leah out because I totally love the name too. So. When we're talking about those labels, then we can start. That was just one portion in it. And I call out the carbohydrates because usually most people want to know about learning to lose weight or how to lean out, how to tone out. And that's one of the first things that we have to start evaluating what they're eating. But the second is Leah seems like she was having some fun with ranch dressing. So Leah, oh, talk man. to me about why we chose ranch dressing labels. <laughs> All right, I guess I'll just like, today is a day of confessions, I guess. So um, I do have, I mean, I really don't eat ranch that often, but I do when I make chicken wings, which to be fair, I make chicken wings on the air fryer. So, oh, they're so the, good. They're oh my so God. Good. The it's bomb. literally the best invention ever, this air fryer. I almost, it's almost unbelievable that they come out with the same texture as if you threw them in a vat of oil. It's, it's incredible, this technology of an air fryer. Yes. Um, so much so that I actually cook chicken breast in the air fryer and it has an even better texture than baking it. It's so good. Um, but anywho, we digress. Um, That's a whole nother episode is playing with the air fryer, right? <laughs> yes. Just, it's just, the episode is just going to be called air fryer. Air fryer. That's it. <laughs> That's it. Um, so anyway, so with the, with the chicken wings, uh, we do chop up some carrots and some celery. Um, and that's basically our meal. It's just chicken wings, celery, and carrots. However, we we have gotten used to using ranch as our little dipping sauce. Um, and one of those days, we're like, oh, maybe we should get fat-free ranch dressing, you know, to get away from the bad, the original uh, ranch dressing. And, you know, I was just, you know, I'm, I'm so curious. And we had both bottles out that day. Um, and so I was like, oh, let, let me actually try actively reading the nutrition label and see what the hoopla is about just slapping a label fat free into, uh, the, onto the branch dressing, uh, bottle. And so as I read on, my eyes just got bigger and bigger as to how un it's actually so much more unhealthy to eat the fat-free ranch dressing than the actual original uh, ranch dressing. And I said, never again. I'm never going to go for fat-free. And while the, like, the calories look much more attractive than regular ranch, um, it's, I was so shocked by how much sugar is actually added. I mean, it's not that much sugar, but still, there's sugars added into the fat-free. And, um, and also, the flavor wasn't even worth it not even worth the sacrifice at all so i am going to see if i can pop this into our stream here if all three of us there we go so this is the nutrition label that leah's talking about and she actually went ahead and she compared the original to the fat-free version and i'm guessing leah just because this is here this one um to the left is the original version and the one to the right is the fat-free am i correct 
uh, yes, to the left is the original and uh, to the right is fat free. Now okay. we have a comment, we have a comment from Mr. Meese and she says, it's process going organic is the best. So I guess that's another conversation too is organic well, versus- and I, and I love that they called that out because the first thing that I was actually going to mention to you is if you look on the fat free version side, look at how long me. that, well, look at how long that ingredient label is, right? Look at, look at how, many different things are actually in there just to make it fat free and you know right down to actually the sugars are higher in the fat free version than even in the original version and part of that is because they did swap out how they sweeten it so in the non fat or the fat free version of it it's got cane sugar in it or i believe it's like corn syrup in it yeah if you want ali you can hide me so that way the graphics is bigger if I hide you, I may not get you back. Okay. So, <laughs> and I can hear you too. It's a good day for us right now. <laughs> but first of all, there's way too many ingredients in here, way too many oils that we need to have in there in order to take the fat out. And guys, fat free is not always the best solution. You know, they decided to go fat free with a lot of products because, and, and again, I'm not here to diagnose, treat, cure anything okay so let me make that clear but I am here to inform and one of the things through the years is that the American Heart Association had come out with this idea years ago because cardiac disease is amazingly strong in this country that we're gonna take the fat out of everything and then we're gonna all live healthier and I, and I hate to say or dispel that but you know cardiac disease is still one of the number one killers that are in the United States right now. So the idea of taking all of this fat out or the good fat, because we would use butters or full fat milk, and then well, we're going to replace them with all these different oils and make them still creamy. Sometimes it's not so good. There's a lot of products that are out there that are fat free that actually do more damage. I don't know if you remember Lay's came out with, um, I think it was like oleic and people were having you know, back to the bowel movement thing, the uncontrollable uh, release of bowel movement without wanting it, you know, or in other words, I hate to be blunt, but like sharding, people would shart. So it's really important to know what your ingredients are. And now me personally, I am a person who I like Greek yogurt based. So I am going to, okay, so what did I have been corrected? Cardiac disease number three, cancer number two, diabetes number one. Thank you, Janice. But I know cardiac disease has been such a major killer. It is, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, it is number one for women. So I am going to go ahead and take this off so we can get Miss Leah back with me. And Miss Leah is going to be joining us again, Tortilla. But one of the things that we want to look at is <laughs> oh, the name is forever going to stick along with no drama llama. So. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things that we want to know too is that I happen to like Greek based, like Greek yogurt based. So even in taking ranch, if you're going to enjoy something like that, you've already made the point of doing uh, air frying your wings, which is huge improvement in what you're doing. You went ahead and paired that protein with a nice alkaline with your veggies and you have that going in there. And so now one more way to really kind of lighten that up or make it a little bit more healthier would be um, a Greek yogurt based ranch, which would then you're going to get a healthier fat that's in there. Calorically, listen, things with fat have a higher calorie content. For every gram of protein or carbohydrate, you're going to get four calories from each gram. For every gram of fat, you're going to get nine. So even sometimes something as simple as an avocado, which is high in fat, or people now are using coconut oils, those are higher fat, you're going to get a higher calorie count. So again, calorie is a, a unit of energy. If it's a good calorie, it's a good unit of, ener unit of energy. It's Sunday, I can't talk, so bear with me. But <laughs> What's in your mug, Allie? I don't know, Leah. I wish it was espresso. I had a really nice, like, good, uh, uh, oh, my God, I can't think today, uh, okay. French press uh, espresso beans the other day, and I couldn't find my French press in time for our live feed, so I had to go with good old chicory coffee because I wanted some of that New Orleans feeling because those poor people got hit with the hurricane. 
uh, over in Louisiana. So I'm yep. grateful for them. Shout out to them. I hope everyone is safe and okay. Yep. But back to what we're doing, that label can tell you so much. That nutrition label can tell you, don't get caught up just in calories, people. You know, see where the calories are coming from. If something is a little bit of a higher fat and you can look at it at ingredient label and actually figure out where the fat's coming from. Is it coming from milk? Is it coming from full fat cheese? Is it coming, is not coming from all these different oils, unless it's something like, you know, you have a sunflower oil, a coconut oil, an olive oil, a grapeseed extract oil. There's all these different beautiful oils that are out there that we can use. That's where we're going to get some of our numbers from. But I always say, especially if it's coming to snacking, get the most bang for your buck, right? What is your best net take home pay? How many of something can you get in that serving size? And when you're dealing with kids, um, one of the things like you were talking about tortilla chips is, you know, Figure, you're dying to say my name. What? You're dying <laughs> to say my name. <laughs> no, I'm sorry, Tardelia. But if you have kids at home, you know, I do encourage you. Is it's great math work also is, is get the little ones engaged in it at a young age. You know, get yourself some little sandwich bags or snack size bags. And you know, Leah, if you want to help your problem and you absolutely refuse to to go off Tostitos and look for someone else, then you need to put seven chips in a bag and put them away, right? And that is your serving. You need to be able to tell your brain when enough is enough. But opening a bag and just dipping in, that's mindless eating. And I guarantee you it's probably more than 21 chips that you're having. <laughs> so that extra 400 calories is a lot. And do you know how many calories it takes you to shed per day to lose one pound at the end of the week? Do you remember what I've taught you? Oh boy. Uh, Come on, you're on the spot. On, repeat the question for me one more time. I'm okay. going to buy myself some time here. How many cal? If I had to to spread out the caloric equivalent of burning to lose one pound over the course of a week, how many calories per day would I need to shed? Can we cue the Jeopardy music? Because it's going to be do, do, <laughs> let, let me Google it real quick. I'm kidding. No. You it's, can't. Uh, no it's, uh, it's 3,500 calories. That's over the course of a week. So break that down by seven is 500 calories a day, right? So if you're eating 21, 30 chips per day, okay, and you just have them a couple days a week, you're already on your way to that weight gain. That's how simple and how easy it is. So that's why it's important to understand that nutrition label. So you know what, what are you actually taking in, right? And that goes back to being mindful when you're eating. But I think it's really important that, you know, look at your ingredients. Butter is another one of those really fun labels to, to watch. Like butter should literally be three ingredients, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to quote that line from Mean Girls if anybody out there has seen Mean Girls. Oh, it's butter a carb. It's butter a carb. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm a mouse, duh. <laughs> <laughs> so, so uh, yeah, I'm not wearing pink and it's not Wednesday. <laughs> but right. um, but it, it comes down to the same thing, that butter is something very simple. It should have three ingredients. It should be cream, salt, enzymes but take a look at some of your tip okay mean girl come on now scratch no, I'm sorry I'm just laughing at another story that I have about oh. the butter that you recommend in your program and my partner who has been extremely supportive in fact she's the one that has like cracked the whip on me to staying on track you know so I got to give shout out to Miss Sharpate uh, but her name is Gabrielle Gabby and she's basically helped me on my journey 2.0 and trying to get back on the path to health. And so um, funny story, I know I'm just like totally taking over here, but uh, Ali, this is where I feel like Ali is one of my biggest heroes too, because it, it's one of those in her program, she, and I'm sure anybody who watches this and is in her program sees in the butter suggestion and uh, she suggests getting Kerrygold Farms. Is that right? Oh, Kerrygold. Yes. Kerrygold Farms. The ones that it is a good pure butter. <laughs> yes. So I just said, she's like, well, what kind of butter do you want? Oh, boy. What do we have here? Is that our guest? It's Lola. Oh, it's Lola. 
I know. So go she's ahead. Sorry. 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 This is one of the okay. advantages of being at home. <laughs> she's doing her job. It's fine. She's guarding your house. She so, is. Um, so basically, uh, she says, what butter, what's the brand of butter you need? And I'm like, I need Kerrygold Farms. And she says, why? And I'm like, because Ali says so. <laughs> and she's like, there has to be a better reason. Why is that brand so great? And I'm just like, I don't know. Just get it. It's because Ali says so. I don't care. Just get the butter. And she's like, all right, fine, I guess. And then uh, I had to have the conversation with Ali. I said, okay, why, why, why that butter? So, anywho, new shirt you. hashtag because Ali says so. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I love that. You know, it's like those. I think it was you a long time ago, right? That was like the WWAD. You know, it's it, what would Ali do? So, yes. I love that. I love that story. I love that I'm like listening, and you, you like people have me in their conscience when they're in the grocery store. That's awesome. I, I love that, but. You know, I want to wrap up today by just saying, you know, again, the label is is kind of the guide, right? The label is the guide of where you want to go. And it could be good and it could be bad, but it gives you all the information that you need. And obviously, the healthier choices that we can make, the better. And, you know, it's a work in progress. So, you know, don't beat yourself up there. Tortilla, Leah. but just <laughs> I want to know. I want to know next time we're going to follow up on like on our next podcast. I want to know if you found another uh, brand out there that gave you a little bit more bang for your buck, right? I, I want to see what you come up with. Challenge accepted. Challenge accepted. But I'm glad that we got to get on coffee with a coach. I apologize for last week's delay in getting to you guys. But, you know, we did have some celebratory stuff going on because we don't always want to talk about the bad things. We want to talk about the good things, too. So we had a little celebrating going on. Nice occasion in our house. But um, I hope that everybody remains safe. I so appreciate everyone for watching, tuning in. We hope you've gotten some good information. If you have any topic requests, we would love to hear them because it's about helping you guys navigate through this crazy, crazy world in the safest and healthiest way possible. And it is you know, my honor to sit next to, split screen next to my, my, my Just good say friend. it. Just say it. No, 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 no. My good friends, Leah, here, um, because I love hearing your perspective and I love hearing the stories. And I'm sure so many people can relate to all the things that you're going through. So for me, thank you so much. I'm blessed, Leah. Thank you so much for tuning in, guys. I hope you got something out of it. However, before we uh, before, before we sign off, uh, I just remembered of one really interesting thing uh, when it can when it comes to nutrition labels real quick, real quick. Um, so the shark bait um, pointed out about the order of ingredients and whatever order the ingredients are is what's most of in the product. And the lower it goes, the lower the ingredient is in the list, the least yep. of it there is. Absolutely. Great point. I'm glad that you picked that out. Um, and again, just what there's a lot of things in those labels that none of us understand what the heck they mean. So eventually we will be deconstructing those as well. But listen, that's what Google's for. If yeah, you know, there was a great commercial a while ago. If you can't pronounce half the stuff that's in it, why are you putting it in your body? Right? The cleaner the better. So in, in most things. I don't even want to say that the good things for you sometimes don't have nutrition labels, right? Whole fruits, whole vegetables, good lean and clean proteins. Those types of things generally don't come with, with many nutrition labels because they don't have many preservatives in them. So that's really where you're going to see it. That list starts getting longer and it's more than a few ingredients. Then you definitely know there are some factors in there outside of just the food that you're wanting to consume. But great point. Thank you for, for highlighting that and bringing that up. But again, I want to thank each of you. We love being able to do this. It gives uh, me a lot of joy. I don't know about you, Leah. Poor Leah's on the hot seat all the time having her confession. So. <laughs> Yeah, I might as well be a confessional rather than me being your sidekick co-host. <laughs> oh, it's all good. Listen, I have, you know, confessions too. But 
Until then, in my next round of coffee, whatever it will may be, and get the vodka out of your coffee mug. We know what you're doing over there. <laughs> what? I don't know what you mean. I didn't even know drama. Oh, Leah, I love you. I'm so glad you're part of my quarantine. You're awesome. <laughs> I like that quarantine. You are a part of my quarantine. But again, have a wonderful rest of the weekend. Go out and make it a great week. Read those labels. Try to make one healthy change this week and send us any suggestions you'd like for a future episode. So until then, it's Coach Allie signing off. And, and sidekick Leah. Tortilla Leah. Yay! <laughs> So have a great one, guys. We appreciate you being here. Bye. Bye.